Hi, my name is Paul, and I thought you might like to join us as we go on patrol with the guys of the Dart Animal Rescue Trust Snare Patrol Team on one of their daily patrols looking for poachers' snares in the bush. So who is this now? Lungyele. Yeah. yeah. And we'll be doing our patrols with Game Rangers, National Parks guys, going, removing the snares. Yeah, so these are the wire snares in, that you're finding. Yeah. And there's effort. You can just say hi, effort. <laughs> All right. Hi. <laughs> right, and this is? This is Severino. Yeah, Severino. So what are you doing out We are here? looking for the wood tracks for the poachers, then lead us to where there are snares. And we usually look for the drag marks, which leads us to where the snared animal is. All right. And then what do you do if you find a snared animal? We, rep we, <laughs> we usually report to Paul, is the one who usually comes in that. Ah, oh, that's perfect. And now this is Baoleni. Hey, so what are you doing, Baoleni? My daily work is to remove some snail wires or telephone wires. Yeah. So last year we tried to, to remove the 26 tons. 26 tons of telephone wires? telephone wires. Wow, that's a big job. How long did that take? It takes for three months. Okay, so the reason we're coming into this area is because there's quite a bit of surface water and poachers will always put wire snares in areas where animals are likely to come and drink. They, they're going to put snares around the most likely access routes. And although the water has dried up a lot here, this is a good area for buffalo. Yeah, I'm just coming down to the water hole here now with, on a path. Um, oh, you found something here, uh, Effort. What, what are you finding this side? Oh, there is a wire there. Oh, it's down there. Yeah, then, and it's all the way around here. So this is quite a thick, a thick snare. This is probably more likely for, yeah, and it's anchored to quite a, a solid tree. It's more likely to be a kudu or buffalo snare. Uh, ah, and so you have found something as well, Lungili. What have you found? So what is this? What kind of wire is this? I think it's for impala. Because of the height, the height and the size. Okay. Yeah, so this is where the, the wire is here, then it's coming all yeah, the way around. All the way around. Oh, and show me how what is happening now if the impala is going inside there. You can come like this. Yeah. And then it's getting around your neck. Yeah. Oh, it's terrible. Okay. Thank you. Thank you for finding that. All right. So you found something there, Baoleni. What is that? Yeah, I just found um, a snail for some guinea fowls. So Where? There? This is the, the snail of the, the guinea fowls. It's, I still can't even see it. It's so small. Show me where it is. Yeah, it's too small. Uh, this is some wire, gum, electrical wire, hey? And yeah. then show me how it's working. When, when the guinea fowl is going inside, what happens? So if, if the guinea fowl get inside this thing, it goes like this one. So the kinfowl cannot come out. Okay, okay. And so they put this uh, bushes to the side here and to the side there, so the guinea fowl is going through the middle, hey? Yeah. Wow. Okay. Wow, thank you. So how many wires did you collect today? What was, was the total? Four, four snares. Four snares. Yeah. All right, yeah, that's lucky. Four animals saved from the bush, from poachers. Okay, thanks. This is a tragedy, but this is what happens to wild animals in areas where there's no anti-poaching presence or active snare patrols being carried out on a regular basis. Sadly, these animals couldn't be saved, but what's even worse is that the poachers didn't return to recover the meat from the carcasses, and these unnecessary deaths were no more than a senseless and wasteful tragedy. Fortunately, however, the DART team has been able to find immobilize and rescue countless wild animals over the last 20 years. For a small non-profit wildlife organization like DART, these wildlife rescues are a costly exercise and we are totally dependent on wildlife loving people like you for the funding and support to remain operational. If you'd like to help, please visit the DART website at www.dartwildlife.org where you can make a one-off donation 
or perhaps you'd like to make a smaller direct debit to help cover our regular monthly operational expenses. We'd be very grateful for any support you could offer and if you'd like to stay in touch, please fill in the contact form on the DART website so we can keep you updated with brief news clips and videos of our wildlife rescues and conservation works in the field. Finally, it's a big thank you from the DART team and the many wild animals your kind donation will help to rescue and save. Thank you. If you'd like to help, please visit our website at www.dartwildlife.org. There you can donate to ensure DART can continue to save and rescue many more snared and injured wild animals